Hello and welcome back to another episode of RBL TV. I'm Mallory and this is Aaliyah. We have a lot to talk about, so listen up. We have an upcoming event that all 8th graders should be very excited for, the 8th grade formal. The formal is on May 11th and will begin at 6 o'clock and end at 8.30. The admission ticket in will be $10 per ticket. Tickets will not be sold at the formal, so make sure you get them. Now let's talk SCMS Sports. Our baseball team finished up their season on Tuesday as region runner-ups in a doubleheader against Franklin County. Our track team had a strong showing on Thursday finishing up their season in the region meet. Our ladies golf team finished their season on Monday and went undefeated winning region. Now we have SCMS videos. One of our crews had a chance to check in with some of our students about their spring break plans. Hey, I'm EJ from Mary today. Riley. Jacob. And what grade are you in? I'm in six. I'm in six. And what do you plan on doing for spring break? I'm going camping. I'm going to Chattanooga. All right, thanks. Hey guys, my name is Elvin. Today I'm here with Emma. Mom. What are y'all doing for spring break? Um, probably just going to chill and go to the movies. Um, I'm going to go to my grandpa's house. All right, thanks. Hey guys, my name is Lee. I'm here with Jaden. Sure. Right, and what are y'all doing for spring break? I'm going to the movies and face some of my friends. I'm glad to Okay, okay thank you. Now for our book review for this week. Hi, I'm here with Eli Stonecipher, and today he'll be talking about the book called The Lord of Opium. Who do you recommend this book for? Sci fi lovers and dystopian readers. Can you give us a quick summary? of the book well it's a second in the series to start off it's set in the year 2146 the main character is a clone of a infamous drug lord the cast changes a bit some characters die some some live and it, it causes a lot of drama it's it's got a good action tell to it but it it does do sort of romance in the book. Hi, I'm here with Michael Ryder, and today he'll be talking about the book called Minecraft Survival Guide. Who would you recommend this book for? Well, pretty much any Minecraft player, new players, experienced players, um, veterans, anyone, honestly. Cool. Um, can you give us a quick summary of the yeah. book? Well, in section one, it talks about the items, effects, and blocks, such as the basics like dirt blocks, stone, and grass, and wood, and stuff like that. Also, in section two, it talks about hostility and like the hostile mobs, such as zombies, creepers, and endermen. And the main icon of the game is definitely the creeper. And in section three, it talks about like when you, that you're ready to start playing. And it talks about you should build a base, what you should do on your first day, second day, what you can craft with certain blocks and items. But before section one, two, and three, there's also another section that really isn't having like a section number. It just talks about like the technical stuff such as uh, you what are you playing on Xbox stuff like that? You playing single player, multiplayer, and it's just pretty basic stuff of Minecraft. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Finally, we have our library tour part three and challenge. If you have anything you would like to add to RBL TV, please email Mr. Swafford by Wednesday of each week. We hope you have a great break. And then, of course, we have our famous pigs, Gladys and Coco, and they are very happy. They're chewing all day long. So what gave you the idea to put guinea pigs in the library? Well, so when I used to have my own classroom and I taught fifth grade, 
I had a little boy that really struggled with um, getting along with people and he would get very upset and anxious. And so I thought, you know, he needs just something soft to cuddle and love. And we went and first got Gladys. Hi Gladys. And he took very good care of Gladys. And then COVID happened and we had to go home. Mm -hmm. And so Gladys didn't have any kids to play with throughout the day. So I went and got Coco as soon as I could and Coco kept Gladys happy. Mm -hmm. And so they get along real well. And that young man, he would come in every morning. His job was to cut up vegetables and get ready for the pigs. He trained other kids how to hold and feed. Um, he made name plates for their cage. He did a good job taking care of them. So what about over here with the little turnstile? Oh, good yeah. point. So this is what we call chick lit. It doesn't mean that only girls can check it out, but it is, um, more likely that girls are going to enjoy reading this. Hmm. Um, there is a little bit of romance and uh, maybe some, you know, relationship drama or friend, girl friendships, how they get along and all that. So that is what Chick Lit is about. And in this section right here. Our new books. And we have purchased a whole lot of books this year because y'all have done such a great job checking them out. We have had almost 20,000 checkouts this year already. 20,000 wow. books checked out. So that nice. means Miss Brock has put mostly 20,000 books away just today, right Miss Brock? Yeah. Um, so these are um, our new books. And then against the wall um, where that big graphic novel sign is, um, we have kids come in and say, where are your graphic novels? I said, see the sign on the wall. Um, so that's where those are. How about the bean bags? Is it just a little reading area for like well, when yeah. you're waiting? For they do. Customers? They like to come in, especially like if classes come in, then they always kind of rush over there and kind of try to be first on the bean bag. <laughs> They're pretty sad looking right now. They're um, very flat. <laughs> yeah, very flat. Then I've looked at buying some more stuffing for those, but. Uh, it actually costs more than buying a new bean bag. So, wow. yeah, I think we're looking for something a little more durable to replace them with. So how about the free books over here? Mm, good point. Okay, so free books. All of these books were actually in our library. Some of them have sadly not been checked out at all. Um, some of them have been checked out a whole lot and they needed to be replaced with a newer version because it's just pages are dirty, wrinkled, torn, things like that. So some of these books we had four or five copies of. So example, Rock and Minerals, we had um, like four of that particular book. So I've withdrawn them. We put them over here. Um, every time you come in, you can take one free book with you. If you have a restriction because you have lost or damaged books that you haven't paid for, then you can come over and choose this and still walk out with a book. So I think that's a very um, popular section, whether they get a book or not. It's a good idea to just have, instead of just throwing them away, you donate them or use them for if you can't check out. Right, right. So how about over here with the hate thoughts? Okay. So some books, we just want you to be able to have something to look forward to. So this is our Pink Dots, seventh and eighth grade only. Um, there's nothing too terribly horrible over here. Um, I put Five Nights of Freddy over here because um, I think that I know that a lot of kids play those games at home, right? Um, parents let them play them at home, but the graphics in that I think are pretty serious a little bit scary and ooey. So um, why put that over here? What else is over here? Twilight, the Twilight series, um, you know, that has a little bit of romance in it, and vampires and all of that. Um, it's a little heavier read. So um, that's what those are over here.